as usual, we always count on you to take our message to the public of the outcomes of these two committees. So the, let me start with the Financial Stability Committee that uh, sat on Friday, uh, 3rd May. Normally it's a committee that assesses the stability and performance of the, of the financial sector in general. Uh, and the committee was happy to, to not observe uh, good performance in the, in the financial sector in general across all the financial uh, sector subsectors. Uh, we see the assets of the financial sector continuing to expand. Uh, and when we put the, all uh, the, or consolidate all the assets of the financial sector, we see it expanding by 13.1% uh, uh, in the first quarter uh, of this year. And that is uh, increasing to 4.7 trillion as total assets of our, of, our, of our financial sector. And again, what's important to note here is that the, the two deposit taking and lending institutions of our, or subsectors of our financial sector, the banking and microfinance oh. sector, the big chunk of these uh, assets are in loans, uh, loans to the private sector, uh, of 58% for the banks and 52% for the microfinance institutions. So we see them doing the, their primary uh, role of uh, uh, being a mediator between the posters and the uh, investors of uh, the resources. Uh, the other important point to note, uh, again, is the performance on the NPL side at which one of the measures of the stability of the financial sector or the trend in the stability of the financial sector. Uh, so the NPLs on the banking side remained stable at 6.8% uh, when you compare last year, end March last year to end March this year, uh, there was no change. But we see uh, a drop in the NPL on the uh, microfinance institutions from 8.8 last year, March last year, to 7.2 this year. So we saw good uh, recoveries uh, on the from both sides uh, that contributed to the reduction in this NPL, especially in the microfinance uh, sector. So this gives us uh, confidence that the assets of the or the main component of the assets of the banking and microfinance institutions remain uh, healthy. Again, linked to this uh, good performance in the uh, credit side, we see profits of the financial sector increasing in the first quarter. Uh, the profit after tax for banks increased from 9.2 billion in the first quarter of last year to 16.1 billion in the first quarter of this year. And that of MFIs increased from 0 0.9 to 3.8 billion. Uh, and good to note also the profitability in the insurance sector that uh, increased from 7.2 billion to 9.3 billion. So across the, the, the financial institutions of the financial sector, we saw good performance in terms of their profitability. And this is mainly linked to the good quality of the assets are said earlier, uh, but also especially on the, on the insurance sector side, we saw good performance uh, last year on the motor insurance uh, subsector because of the improvements in uh, managing their claims, but also the increase that in the premiums that was implemented from the beginning of last year had a positive impact on the performance of the motor uh, insurance. The other area we look at is the liquidity of the uh, institutions, and we see both uh, banks and microfinance institutions uh, liquid, uh, sufficiently liquid and able to uh, continue, uh, one, extending loans to, to the private sector, but also have enough buffer for, to deal with any, any shock. So we have a measure that we look at. Uh, there's what we call the liquidity coverage ratio. That is a measure for 
the liquidity of the banking uh, sector and the minimum that it can't go below is 100%. So we see this at 200 and, uh, uh, at uh, uh, 215 uh, percent. And on the microfinance institutions, uh, they are normally supposed to be at least 30 percent uh, their liquidity ratio, and we see this at 108 percent. So that also gives us uh, comfort that we, the financial sector is. Uh, sufficiently liquid. The other measure we, we track is the uh, capital adequacy or the solvency of the financial sector. And across the board, all the, the banking industry, the microfinance institutions, and the, the insurance sector, they are all uh, way above our minimum uh, requirements for uh, solvency of the, of the sector. One point we noted that was of concern was a uh, slowdown in foreclosure, the sale of assets, there are issues there, and so we, the committee committed to work with other policy uh, makers to advocate for reforms uh, in the policies around or uh, processes around the disposal of assets of, uh, and that were given as securities to, to guarantee loans to the private sector. So th that's the summer of the outcome of the meeting of the, of the Financial Stability Committee. Uh, so in summary, the, the, the sector, financial sectors are sound and stable and continue to grow and continue to be profitable, so which is a good sign for our financial sector. Now on the Monetary Policy Committee, uh, as you know, we, we changed the as you know we changed the, the, the monetary policy framework, and I've wanted to use some sort of a presentation with the graphs and the, uh, so to demonstrate to, to to give more explanation to to what we, we the outcome of the committee uh, or the basis of the decisions of the committee, and of course the most important thing anyone would want to to hear from the committee's the decision taken. Uh, so as you see on the slide, the, based on the different uh, economic uh, conditions, both within our country and uh, globally, uh, the, the Monetary Policy Committee decided to reduce the central bank policy rate uh, from 5.5% to 5%. And this is mainly to uh, continue improving uh, domestic demand uh, that will uh, increase uh, the performance of the economy in general, but also we expect to see all this decision to support the banking industry or the financial sector to continue extending credit to the private sector. But again, as you see on the next slide, our inflation has been low for more than a year now. and. Uh, we think we need to, to, to put some fire in this to, to be within uh, our range. So the, the decision is really linked to uh, those three main uh, factors coming from our analysis of our economic uh, uh, factors. So with this decision, we expect uh, inflation to uh, be at around 3% by the end of this year. Uh, from 1% that we observed in the first quarter of this year and 1.4% uh, uh, realized in the entire uh, uh, 2018. Uh, so that's, I think that was the main uh, slide or main business of the Monetary Policy Committees around inflation and the policy decision is linked to uh, economic conditions but also seeing uh, expected slight increase in uh, in inflation. And the basis also is on the, uh, when you look at the economic uh, performance of, the, of our country, as you heard from the Minister of Finance and the, the Institute of Statistics, last year we had good performance at 8.6% uh, of our GDP. Uh, for us, we track what we call uh, the composite index of economic uh, activities uh, so that we are able before we even get the, the numbers from Institute of Statistics, we can tell the trend of the economy. 
And when you look at the first quarter of this year, as you see the graph on the left-hand side, uh, we see the Rio uh, Composite Index uh, increasing by 12.2%. Uh, so this gives indication that the good performance we saw last year at least is continuing in the first half, first quarter of this year. And this gives us uh, uh, indication that we're in line to achieve the annual target of 7.8%. Uh, so we don't know exactly what the first quarter performance will be, but with the, the trend, as again, as you can see the graph, the graph of our CIA is, moves in the same direction with the graph of the real economic performance. So the 12.2% project we see in the first quarter indicates that the, the real GDP at the end of the day will be uh, in the same uh, direction. Again, uh, of course, as we said in the decision of the Monetary Policy Committee is to influence uh, mainly uh, the uh, increase in credit to the private sector. So far, good indications in the first quarter. Uh, outstanding credit to the private sector increasing by 16.2% uh, uh, compared to 7.3% we had last year. And more so, the new authorized loans increasing by 24.9% compared to negative 7.4% we had uh, observed uh, last year. So the good performance of the economy we saw in the last year has had positive impact in the first quarter of this year, especially uh, on the new authorized loans. And uh, though we decided to, to be more accommodative uh, uh, going forward, we've been general accommodative, so that has contributed to uh, this good performance in the credit to the private sector that at the end of the day increases the domestic demand and impacts on the performance of the economy in general. Uh, next. The other important point to note linked to our new monetary policy framework is the, the improvement in, our, in the monetary transmission mechanism. I think we have been showing this graph, especially on, on the left-hand side, where we, saw, where we show the short-term money market rates really converging to our policy rates. It's a bit small. Uh, I don't know if you see it, but the red line uh, you see in, in that congested uh, lines there is our policy rate, and the, the blue, the green, and the uh, purple lines, uh, one is for the 28 days treasury bill, then the repo rate, and the interbank market rate. The, we see all of those uh, converging around our uh, monetary policy, I mean our central bank policy rate. So, which is good. Uh, I think at the end of the day, what we would have expected is really to see that impacting on the uh, the market rates. And uh, so, the graph on the right hand side indicates the I call it positive movements in the lending and uh, uh, deposit rates. Uh, slight reduction, but at least we see continuing trend downwards from uh, 2015 at 17.3 going down to this quarter at 16.8 percent, that is on the lending rate. Uh, then the deposit rates also keeps around 7, came down from uh, 8.2 that time to 7.2 today. So there's a time lag, but at least we see uh, already the, the monetary policy decisions uh, that impacted on the, on the short-term rates uh, already impacting on the, on the money market, I mean on the credit uh, rates. Though we didn't bring here a graph for the uh, T-bond rates, we also see the same trend. Uh, most, almost all the interest rates for the, for the treasury bonds on the capital market have also gone, uh, gone down. So it, it's a good sign uh, that supports uh, our move into the, the new monetary policy framework. On the foreign exchange, uh, on the External side, uh, I think we see um, some pressures here. Uh, pressures in terms of there's been increasing uh, imports from last year uh, and exports not performing that well because of reduction in international commodity prices. Uh, as we reported, I think, in the monetary policy statement of February, 
uh, we saw our deficit increasing by our trade deficit increasing by 9.3 percent last year. Uh, when we look at the first quarter of this year, that trend has continued. We see uh, the trade deficit increasing by 7.5 percent compared to an increase of 0.6 percent we had in the same period last year. And this is mainly linked to uh, increase in imports. And when you look at imports, mainly imports of uh, uh, capital goods and intermediate goods for, for construction and for industrial use. Uh, so that has pushed up the import bill. Uh, that, uh, and because the base of the import is big, so any increase in the import bill uh, in terms of the nominal amounts is much bigger than uh, the, the, the exports, so the reduction in exports with the uh, increase in imports impacted on the negative trend in the uh, trade deficit. But this is mitigated by other financial flaws, uh, so through the foreign direct investment, through uh, 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 remittances uh, and tourism, and so in general, uh, we see good performance in that uh, part of our balance of payment, increasing by 20.3 uh, last year, and uh, mainly driven by increase in direct uh, investments of 12.8%. And we expect this trend to continue throughout this year. So overall, uh, increase of the net uh, financial inflows expect to be at 16.9%. And therefore, that is expected to mitigate the impact we would have uh, from the trade uh, deficit on our exchange markets. Uh, so though we expect this year the far rate to depreciate uh, much faster than last year, uh, already we have 1.1% uh, end March compared to 0.9% we had end March 2018. And therefore, expect by the end of this year, the flower under might depreciate around 5% uh, compared to 4% we had last year. So to us, this is uh, still taken as stable uh, for an exchange market. Uh, and the, we had a slight increase in fuel prices uh, this quarter, though overall 2019 is expected to be a reduction compared to last year. Then we have uncertainties uh, globally, the trade tensions, the Brexit, and all those are supposed to impact on the performance of the global economy uh, to 3.3% uh, compared to 3.6% achieved last year. So briefly, that's the, the economic context in which we are operating in, and therefore that impacts uh, the decisions that the Monetary Policy Committee has given. But as I say on the last slide, we, the MPC will continue to monitor the developments, both globally, regional, and uh, within our country. And if there are any unforeseen economic conditions, uh, the committee is always, though we meet on a quarterly basis, but if need be, we can meet to take a decision that will uh, mitigate with any unforeseen uh, shocks on, on the economy. Though for now, as I said, we don't see any uh, shocks going forward. So what has been expected is already put into the, uh, the models we, we did, the modeling we did uh, this quarter uh, that led us to the decisions we take. So the full report will be given on our, on our website. Uh, so you can, at any time from the 14th, that is the inflation report. You can uh, read uh, the report uh, with all the details. And so the next MPC is expected uh, in August uh, 2019. So briefly, that's what we had to communicate to you.